Hello everyone, we are going to be continuing our talk about exponents today with two new rules and that is what do we do when we have zeros in exponents and what do we do when we have negative exponents? What do they mean? And let's take a look first at our easier rule and that is zero as an exponent. Now think about what an exponent tells you. An exponent tells you how many times a number is being multiplied by itself. And we saw in the past that if you just have a number like nine, it's technically being multiplied by itself one time because what we're saying is we have one nine. So if you think about x here being multiplied by itself zero times, it means it was never really multiplied. So the only thing being multiplied by, or the only thing being multiplied there would be the number one, which when you multiply does nothing to the number. Because I could do one times 10 and I'm still just going to get 10. It does nothing. So this is saying that the x basically isn't there. Now this is a really handy rule and I am going to try to trick you sometimes. Sometimes I'm going to give you a really complicated strain of numbers, just listing one after another and it's going to get big and long and I'm going to say simplify it and you'll notice that right outside the parenthesis will be a to the zero power. Anytime you have the entire thing raised to a zero power, remember that's saying this whole thing basically isn't there and in multiplication the thing that's not there is the number one. So you just switch this to one. And that would be it. You wouldn't have to simplify anything inside of it. You could just write one. So you can even kind of look down this worksheet real quick and find ones raised to the zero power. So for instance, five to the zero, immediately I could just write one. It doesn't take much thought. The only thing that you do need to watch out for is make sure that it is the exponent that is zero. Should I have a zero raised to an exponent? That is asking about something different. Zero to the second power is zero times zero, which gives you an answer of zero. So watch where that zero is placed. The one that we're talking about is the exponent of zero, not the base of zero. All right, so let's check out our second rule of our second rule has to do with negatives in the exponent. Now, what does this mean? If an exponent normally means something like I want x squared, that means that x is being multiplied by itself two times, what on earth could it mean if you have something like x to the negative second? Well, we can't really do a negative x times its negative self, just magically making a negative number there. This negative doesn't mean what our traditional negative means. What it's saying here is that this is in the wrong part of the fraction. So you can take your x to the second and you can move it to the bottom or the denominator of the fraction when you have a net negative. So that's all it's saying there. Move it to the bottom of the fraction or if you were in the bottom, move it to the top of the fraction. So in this case, x to the negative second would turn into one over x to the second. It exchanges its negative to move to the bottom of the fraction. Keep in mind that the only thing that you are moving is the base raised to a negative power. So let's say I had a string of things, like maybe I had x to the third times y to the negative fourth over maybe z the only thing moving here is the negative exponent. So this would move to the bottom of the fraction or had it been in the bottom, it would move to the top. And that would give us a result. And I'm just gonna come out of my box here for a second. We're gonna get x to the third over z times y to the fourth. Again, it exchanges its negative to move. Again, if the negative is in the bottom, it will simply move it towards the top. You can see how this one moves towards the top. And since there's nothing left in the bottom, we replace it with a one. Now, of course, x to the n over 1 could just be written as x to the n. That is completely fine because division by 1 doesn't actually change your number. Let's do some practice problems, though, because these sorts of rules are always easier to see and understand after you've done a few examples. Our first one, we have a negative in the exponent. So what we are going to do is we're going to turn this into a fraction so we can move it to the other part of the fraction and get rid of that negative. 
So let's take this, move it down, and that leaves us with, well, we have nothing on the top, but we do have one times nine to the second of the bottom, and one times anything is just itself. In the top, since there is nothing there, I'm gonna replace it with a one. That's what's left when there's nothing there in multiplication and division. And so we've got one over nine squared, and you can leave it as nine squared. Let's check our next one then. Notice here we have a negative one. Now this isn't magically just going to switch to the denominator because this is not an exponent. Now whether or not you can do that, we can talk about later. But let's look at the exponents themselves. We have a negative four. Now that means that it needs to move to the other part of the fraction. So what we really have is a negative one times three to the fourth where it changed in its negative. In the bottom, we are left with nothing, so we can just put a one down there. And anything divided by one is itself, and anything multiplied by one is itself. So you can actually rewrite this as a negative three to the fourth. Don't lose your negative here. I don't mind if you keep this as negative one times three to the fourth, but this is technically the best way to write it with the fewest numbers. When you get something like this, 187 to the negative first, again, that negative is just saying adjust the fraction. So draw in your fraction. We've got 187 to the negative one over one. Move the base with its exponent. And that's gonna give us 187 to the first. And at the top, there's nothing there, so we're gonna write a one. And since a power of one doesn't actually change numbers, just saying we have one of the 187s. I could just write 187 in the bottom, I don't need that exponent, and leave the one over 187 as my final answer. Again, be careful that when you are moving things, you are only moving what you absolutely need to. This one has a negative. A to the fourth does not. Because b to the negative second has that negative, we are going to move that to the top and exchange that negative so that we are left with, well, a to the fourth stays at the top. It's being multiplied then by b to the second, that moved b. And on the bottom there is a one. Again, division by one doesn't really change the numbers. So if we can get rid of numbers to simplify things, we might as well. And that leaves us with a to the fourth times b to the second, which can't be combined even with multiplication since the bases are different. When we have something like this, y times x to the negative two, again, that negative's telling you adjust the fraction. Notice that this negative two applies to everything inside the parentheses. That means that whole thing is moving, not just the x or just the y. We're then going to be left with nothing on top, so put that one in there. And on the bottom, we have y times x squared. Quantity is, of course, in parentheses. We don't really like to leave those parentheses at this stage, so don't forget that we can distribute over multiplication our exponents. Don't do this if there's a plus sign. Here we end up with y squared then times x squared, and that would be the best answer, one over y squared times x squared. What about this one where we have a fraction with a negative? Well, I don't really wanna put a fraction on top of another fraction. That gets really, really messy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by distributing this over division, which is of course a form of multiplication, so I know I'm allowed to distribute the power over that. So I'm gonna be left with one to the negative third over two to the negative third. Since both of these have negative exponents, both of them will be moving. So the two to the third will move to the top, one to the third will move to the bottom, and that will give me two to the third over one to the third. I know that one to the third is just one times one times one, which gives me one. And anything over one is just itself. So we can actually just write this as two to the third, since that one in the bottom isn't doing anything. But again, watch what you can and cannot move. Here, what we have are three parts. We've got a two, we've got an x to the negative second, and we've got a y to the third. Each of these functions as kind of its independent number. The only number that is moving is the x to the negative two. 
Notice that this negative two does not apply to this two. Those are talking about different things. This negative two is only talking about the x. So only the x will move, which means along the top, the numerator will have two times y to the third. That two stays in place because it's a different number than this x to the negative second. And that x to this negative second moves to the bottom, becoming x to the second. And at this point, we would have simplified as much as we could. Just be careful that you don't move more than you can. You are only moving the exponent with its base. Jumping ahead just a little bit to number 11, notice here we have c to a negative exponent, a negative x to the fifth, and a d to a negative exponent. Be careful. The negatives that move things are, are applied to c and to d. x does not have a negative exponent, so x will not be moving. It will stay in the top. That negative applies to the base and not to the exponent. So when I am moving things, I'm going to mark them in on here. I know that in the bottom I'm going to have c squared. To the top will be d to the third. And the one thing that didn't move is our negative x to the fifth. We would be good to go there. And all we have then is this final absolute mess. Now before you go through and try to figure out everything that's going on here, some of which we haven't even talked about yet, take a second to look at the overall problem. We have this entire base being raised to the zero power. And remember that what a zero power does is it says that whole thing basically isn't there. So this whole thing is just a multiplication by one. And you would be done.